We will be creating this one line and entering data to perform load flow calculations. The composite network has a double-ended substation. Let's start by creating a new project. You can turn the grid on and use it as a reference for spacing between elements like this. Right next to it, you'll see our continuity check. Let's make that active. That way elements other than the power grid or utility are shown in gray when they're de-energized. Let's drop a couple elements down on the one line. As you can see, the grayed out ones are de-energized because of our continuity check. Now let's make our connections like we showed in, uh, in our earlier tutorial. Now we can access the element ID by double clicking on it, bringing up the property editor. Now we can type in whatever ID we, we desire, in this case, power grid. Let's enter some values, rated KV, MVA, and when we click out of the box like before, it selects typical values. The transform percentage and X over R, as we said before, should be entered based on nameplate data. Typical data can be used if the transformer has not been purchased or the nameplate data is not available. such as this case. We'll enter the MVAs, click out, and it'll select the typical values. We can go down and put our percent Z in, and our X over R, and click out again, and it'll select the other values for us. Or we can select typical Z over R. Now let's enter values for the lump load. Note that the lump load is made of constant power impedance loads. The slider allows you to adjust the percentage of composition. As we mentioned before, the result annotations on the bus can be moved on the one line and placed where clearly visible. Also, if you'd like to extend the bus, you just need to click on the end of it and extend it out. The entire one line or groups of elements may be moved by highlighting the one line and dragging the elements with the mouse. When two branches are connected, ETAP automatically inserts a node between them. This node can graphically represent a connection point or can be changed to represent a physical bus bar.
Element sizes may be changed by right clicking the element and choosing the new size. If a cable is not correctly chosen from the cable library quick pick, it may always be changed. Now we just ran our load flow to view the data. A summary of critical and marginal alerts may be viewed by accessing the alert view from the load flow toolbar. Now connection pin orientations may be changed by right clicking on an element and selecting from various orientation choices. Now we'll set this generator to voltage control mode. ETAP has 10 generation categories that allow you to define various operating conditions of generators and power grids. In this instance, we'll be using the first category called design. Note that the category names are all user definable.